Hi, welcome back to Box Delights, and the game I'm going to show you today is called Mangaka. This is something a little bit different. Um, I thought I'd just throw out a different format video to reflect that really. You might say this is more of a, uh, an activity than a game, um, but it does play one to eight, so a lot of you can play this game, and interestingly is the solitaire variant, because there's not a lot of interaction here in the game. There is a little, I'll show you why. Um, 30 to 60 minutes, sounds about right. Uh, 12 up, I play this with my daughter who's a lot younger, she's nine, and you can play this with the younger ones too. There's a lot of box here, <laughs> and for such a little amount of content, there's a whole bunch of scoring tokens. There's a pad of paper that you draw your results. Your, your, your comics on. This is a game about drawing comics and scoring points for drawing comics. And a bunch of cards and a little rule book. So there's a lot of empty space in here. Okay, but there is a big stack of cards. These are trends and these are themes. The idea of the game is that you draw three themes. And these are going to be the things that are going to set the subject of your comic. Some of them are quite you know, straightforward, some of them are a little bit more abstract. One of the things that I really appreciated actually, because some of these things maybe we didn't quite understand um, in our family, maybe that's just our, you know, the way, the way of our culture, but um, you know, animal costumes, furries or cat girls, but what they've done is they've added little definitions here. Okay, so for those things that younger people may not understand, or if you're not familiar with the Japanese culture, then they will you know, explain what some of these themes are. Let me see if I can find a more obscure example. Uh, keiju, or giant Monsters, so Keiju, if I'm pronouncing that right, is a noun for strange creatures such as Godzilla. It says. Right, but there's a ton of these, an absolute ton of these. Okay? And these are the themes of your um, of your comics. Like what's a salaryman? A Japanese term for a professional office worker. Okay. Body pillows. We didn't we didn't have a clue what these were. Extra large pillows designed to be hugged while sleeping, decorated with anime character artwork or popular, a popular accessory I mean, among anime fans. Anime fans. Okay, so loads and loads of um, themes. You're going to pick three of these. Now, what you do then is you have no, multiple rounds. Okay, so you have a set of comic strips for each round. So round one, you're going to be filling out two panels. Round two, you're going to be filling out four panels. Okay. Round three, you're going to be filling out six panels. Round four, you've now got eight panels to fill out. And the idea is that you've got a set amount of time. So for a hard game, five minutes for each round. For a more uh, easy game, eight minutes or anything in between really. And then you've got those five minutes, you fill out, you draw the comic, and you've got to include subjects from the three themes. That's the idea. But not only that, there's other limitations on what you can or can't draw. Strangely, one of the things that we found, one of the limitations isn't that the comic has to make sense or flow. Um, so you've kind of got to, you know... Uh, Police that yourself a little bit if you like. But the, the rule book's quite straightforward. Rule one, express your themes, okay? The three themes. Rule two, draw something in each panel. And rule three, no more than three word balloons each round, okay? Word balloons. Because what happens at the end of each round is you score points, okay? One point per obsession drawn. These are these theme cards, okay? Um, so three points there, two for using no more than three word balloons, and then two points for drawing something each panel. They don't call them points, they call them fame. Okay. 
Now what's interesting and what makes this more exciting is these trends cards. After, so here's your big stack of themes, but after rounds one, so rounds two, three, and four, you're going to be drawing these trends. At the end of, you know, between rounds one and two, you draw two trends and throw one away and keep one. Between rounds two and three, you pick three trends, throw them away, and, and keep two. And these are common, all right? So each player in the game will have their own three themes that they're drawing their comic about. But these trends affect everybody. So everybody in the game is affected by these. And this is what really changes the game and makes it into something a little bit more um, interactive. So, for example, name a uh, previously unnamed character for two extra two fame. In addition, gain one extra fame for each character you refer to by name who was already named in a previous round. Okay, so there are some points for continuity here. This one says beauty. Include a beauty theme, a beautiful character, a painting, etc. for additional two theme. Gain one extra for each panel consisting entirely of a close-up of a beautiful character. Okay, it remind, remind, reminds you here beauty is subjective. Okay, so I mean a lot of this when it comes to scoring is about, you know, convincing your other players that you deserve the points that the card is trying to award. But it's these trends, it's these blue cards that really separate um, everyone's comics from each other and that's really where winning the game if you like comes about but this isn't a game about winning not really this is a game about the craft of building comics okay so you can see we've got aliens and ninjas <laughs> it's a pillow fight you can see that those were obviously obsessions those pillows were used you don't even have to be a good drawer. I'm not. I'm not good at drawing, and it, but it still, you know, allows you to just have fun with the game. Because even if you're not such a good drawer, you can still score some points. This is my daughter's uh, game that she was playing with her with her cousin. Uh, the solo game is really about just trying to push your way through these four rounds with. In getting as many points as you can with these themes. Now we have a little house rule that we employ, where we sit because I don't know maybe when we've got short attention spans. But what we say is, draw your three themes, and between each round, you can, if you wish, decide to replace one, um, just to kind of give it a little bit of variety as you move from round to round. But that's it, that's Mangaka. Give it a try, because it really does work well for, for people who aren't used to playing games and, but do enjoy drawing, drawing comics, or, you know, like I say, you don't even have to be good at drawing. And adds a little bit of com competition here, too, with these trends, longest words, or not allowed to express themes using any of the, any of the words in the title or description of the theme card. Okay, so it forces you to be a little bit creative, and the solo mode just gives you an opportunity to practice drawing comics. You know, maybe you're stuck with trying to find some inspiration, so you draw three of these and you try and create a comic from them. All right, so that's Mangaka. Give it a try. We really enjoy it, and it's a great little alternative way to spend your free time.